твои мелодица и сына из Пентагу Духа. Аминь. В means in, имен means name, отица means father, и means and, сына means son, и means and, спентагу means holy, духа means spirit, амин means amen. Forgive me for not been posting for a while. Um, uh, it's been pretty busy for the last month, and I'm about to start school back, so uh, there's that. But hopefully I'll be able to upload every other week, hopefully. I do have work. But today we're going to be learning about the Old Church Slavonic cases and nouns. In Old Church Slavonic, we have something called cases. Cases are declined, changed, to a part of speech like a noun, to indicate what their function is in a sentence. All old church Slavonic nouns have declensions and they are listed as follows. So these cases, um, they affect uh, nouns and other parts of speech um, depending on where they fall in a sentence. Say if like um, uh, there is uh, the example I have a cat. I as the subject, have as the verb, and cat as the object. You know, it's it's kind of like that. And there are endings uh, that are uh, put onto these words, and um, to tell them what exactly this function of this specific word is within the sentence. And therefore, Old Church Slavonic doesn't have a set sentence structure like English does. It can be arranged in any order, and it can still make sense. We have the O slash Yo declension. This comprises a masculine nouns. It denotes, denotes masculine persons and animals and other things, and has a subdivision of the neuter that denotes mostly things. The A slash Ya declension comprises a masculine, comprises of feminine nouns and a few masculine nouns. Feminine denotes female persons, animals, and other things, while masculine denotes male persons only. The E declension. Many nouns are feminine, but some are masculine nouns. So, with the masculine, feminine, and neuter genders, these aren't necessarily uh, strictly for the, uh, you know, the actual genders of like people, but they're more of uh, categories for nouns to tell them how it is supposed to be declined um, with either case or number. If it's singular, dual, or plural, if it's in the nominative, the accusative, etc., etc. There are, of course, exceptions. We have the archaic e uh, declension, the archaic u uh, declension, and the archaic consonantal declension. We will get to those later, but um, nouns ending in hard consonants belong to the o, a, or e declension, and nouns ending in soft consonants belong to the yo. Ya or e declension. But let's start with the masculine o declension. For this example, we are going to be using the word rab, rab, which means slave. And this is masculine. And this actually does refer to a male slave. There is another word for female slave. This is in the singular, which means there is only one. And we start with the nominative, which is the subject. Rab. Rab would be the subject, so it does not change. The accusative is more than usual the same as the nominative. Rab. And the accusative is the direct object. The genitive is Raba. Raba. And this is showing possession, like the girl's cat. Girl is the possessor, the cat is the possessed. Uh, this would be showing that the slave has possession over something. Dative is the indirect object. Rabu. Rabu. Now you're asking Austin, what's the difference between the direct object and the indirect object, the accusative and the dative? Well, you see, I'm going to give you an example. I have a cat with a ball. The cat is the direct object and the ball is the indirect object. 
usually the direct object will always come before the indirect object. However, this isn't always the case in English, but it is with other languages like Russian or um, Old Church Slavonic. Um, but like I said, there is no set sentence structure because of these endings. So you could still understand what this is, what the word is implying um, based on its ending. Next, we have the instrumental. Rabume. Rabume. What the instrumental does essentially is it's used to indicate that a noun is the instrument or means by or with which the subject achieves or accomplishes an action. The noun may either be a physical object or an abstract concept. We don't really have this in English at all um, of a noun uh, accomplishing something uh, of a subject. But uh, uh, we'll delve into these things uh, in another video, though. The locative is essentially the location of something, and it is in this case of like if a preposition is before a noun. Like um, if you were to say in the slave, it'd be vorabe, vorabe, because vorabe is um, its slave, masculine slave, and uh, this is telling you where the slave is. The slave is in. In slave. It doesn't make sense, you know, because I'm using the preposition in, but it, it'll have to do. <laughs> the vocative is essentially announcing um, someone, rabe, rabe, and it, it's like um, uh, an announcing someone, like, oh lord, would be. O gospody in Old Church Slavonic. O gospody. And uh, vocative usually always has the ending e. Eh. Um, so it'd be like that. O rabe, O slave. O lord, O gospody. Next we have the dual, which is exactly two. No more, no less. So it would be two masculine slaves. The nominative. Raba. Raba. The accusative, raba, raba. The genitive, rabu, rabu. The dative, rabuma, rabuma. The instrumental, rabuma, rabuma. The locative, rabu, rabu. Next, we're in the plural, which is three or more. The nominative, rabi, rabi. The accusative, rabi, rabi. The genitive, rab, rab. The dative, rabume, rabume. The instrumental. Rabi, rabi, the locative, rabacha, rabacha. And here are the following nouns that are a part of the masculine note of religion. Vas, devil, vatr, wind, glagola, word, grad, town, zakon, law, krov, roof, kristi. Cross, narod, people, plod, fruit, chlab, bread, chram, temple, and svat, flower. These are just examples. These aren't all of them. Now the neuter o declension. For this example, we're going to be using the word lato, lato, which means either year or summer. Singular, the nominative, lato, the accusative, lato, the genitive, lata, the dative, lato, the instrumental, latome, and the locative, lata. Next, the dual, the nominative, lata, the accusative, lata, the genitive, latu, 
the dead, la toma, the instrumental, la toma, the locative, la tu. Now for the plural, the nominative, la ta, the accusative, la ta, the genitive, la ta, the dative, la toma, the instrumental, la te, and the locative, la taja. And here are the following nouns that are part of the New Year Old English as well. Gnazdo, which means nest. Thalo, which means work. Colano, which means knee. Masto, which means place. Cello, which means forehead. And Cendo, which means child. Honestly, thank you for bearing with me. Um, even with my uh, not-so-great pronunciation, because, like, uh, it has been a while since I've been practicing this, um, and it may be a little rusty, uh, because I have been at work a lot and with school. But, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to upload a video every other week, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be doing a special video after this on, like, uh, different greetings and words. And, um, after that, I'm going to be doing another case video where we will be, um, uh, going through the exceptions to the masculine and neuter odeclension. So this will be the exceptions to it, and then we will be done with the odeclension, and we'll move on to the, um, you know, the masculine and neuter yodeclension. And I will uh, be definitely giving examples uh, after these whole declensions, um, just to show you, you know, what what it is essentially. But uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure to comment if you have any questions. I know that um, some of these can be a little lackluster um, after I make them because I, I won't notice it. So j just make sure to um, to uh, notify me and I'll, I'll answer your questions. But uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless and have a wonderful rest of the Dormition of the Theotokos Fast.